How you hooligans doing? Yeah, I hope you guys had a great turkey day and a holiday weekend. We're back to business. Don't forget to go watch our programming from this past weekend. We talk about the 90s biker compared to today. And guess what? The second half of this episode, you're going to get to hear the audio right here on the Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem Podcast. I'm quite upset, though, today. We have a story, our main story coming up, about a bark getting its license on hold, going through a review process, and Leo, now, mind you, there's more incidences that happen at this bar. Well, guess what? They're saying it's a center of gang activity, and you know why? Because the banditos go there. Also, coming up, we have a video of a takedown after a guy, uh, let's just say, uh, put one in somebody after a hit and run. It was not cool whatsoever. Sad state of affairs. Let's go to it. Okay, we are back. We're going to get right into this business right now. And yes, we do have the wall of shame coming up. And wait till you see that one. I'm telling you, I find the best ones about these cops. And they're bumping on the banditos for this bar. They're freaking crazy. Anyway, let's get it right now. We are going to... Uh, stupid stuff right there. Let me get that out of the way for you. We're going to MSN. Uh, let's see here. Albany, Georgia. W-A-L-B. Albany's Viper Unit Motorcycle Club gives back... The Thanksgiving holiday. Good stuff right here. Good stuff. An organization of Albany is helping families enjoy a meal this Thanksgiving. Albany's Viper Unit Motorcycle Club is celebrating 15 years of giving back by serving boxes filled with food with families to enjoy. Those who say that bikers and motorcycle clubs don't do anything for the community, you're schlucks. Anyway, the Biker Unit Motorcycle Club gathered enough food fit for Thanksgiving Day meal in boxes before distributing them out to the community. Quote, you know that just being out here in the community, there are a lot of families in need. And during this time of year... We just try to do what we can to show our support for the needy, said president of Viper Unit Motorcycle Club, Marvin Thomas. Quote, yes, it's going, it's an ongoing effort throughout the membership that I have here. We do fundraisers such as a car wash, barbecue plate sales, things of that nature to and help money. And then a lot of members donate money and things out of their pocket to out of their household funds. Rock and roll, man. Right there's what I am talking about. Quote, you see the great men and women standing behind me that they know people and I know people throughout churches or what have you that we go to and visit. It, and we bring back those names and we take those names and we go out and go prepare those baskets. Congratulations out there, man. That is awesome. Again, that is Albany's Viper Unit Motorcycle Club. Now, this schluck. Fatal crash gets man six years. Biker gave him middle finger. Yeah, just gave him middle, middle finger. Prosecutors say a man who caused the motorcyclist to crash and die after the biker gave him the middle finger has agreed to a deal to spend six years in prison. So basically this schluck ran somebody off the road just because they gave him a finger and all he gets is six years in prison. 
You know what? You call that justice? My God. Investigators say after the gesture, uh, 45-year-old Joseph Anthony Rufo passed the biker on U.S. Highway 21 near Rock Hill in July of 2019. He swerved in front of him, slammed on his brakes. Authorities say 25-year-old Dedrick Strain died on his motorcycle, hit Rufo's truck, and his body then slammed into a guardrail. He was originally charged with murder, but took a plea deal to voluntary manslaughter. You know, <laughs> Hollywood's upset at this one right now. You know what? That is just, oh, originally for murder and you put it down to invent an involuntary. The kid was 25 years old. At least give this guy the difference between 25 and 45 or whatever he was that year's because that's what the kids are going to miss because of him. I'm freaking real, man. Uh, let's see here. Here's our main story. Lawsuit shows connection between recent Cincinnati street shooting and rockin' cigar bar and grill. This is the one I was talking about. Let's see here. Lawsuit see. brought by the El Paso County Attorney's Office sheds light on a shooting in the Cincinnati Entertainment District last weekend. KTSM 9 News investigative reporter Aaron Montes has more. Shelby, a lawsuit against the Rock and Cigar Bar indicates that an altercation began inside of the bar and then spilled outside last Saturday night. A civil lawsuit filed by the El Paso County Attorney's Office on Tuesday kept the Rock and Cigar Bar closed on Wednesday and for an indefinite time. And one of those reasons points to an incident last Saturday night when police... Make sure this is working for you guys. Yeah, it is. A 20-year-old individual in the military who said he had been drinking at the bar. New Mike. According to court documents, he told police a physical altercation occurred inside and carried on outside where someone was shot. It's not the first time such an event has happened, according to court documents. And the lawsuit cites various scenarios involving violence since 2018. Now, there is supposed to be a hearing held very soon about whether... So, there you have it. And going down here... A review of calls to the Rock and Cigar Bar show out of 111 calls for service between February 1st and November 18th of 21, 57 were made to the El Paso Police Department. Eight calls were made for the fire department. And then we go down and see here, there are various references to assaults and fights started in the bar listed in the lawsuit. Law enforcement says the bar is frequently visited by the Banditos Motorcycle Club and an organization identified for being involved in gang activity. So out of all those documented incidences, that's what you come up with. My God, oh, these people. Anyway, big one here. Girl tried to kill me. Biker tells police after shooting librarian accused of pointing a gun at him. Let's get the story before the video. Police in Orange City uh, believe a woman intentionally hit a motorcyclist and took off before being shot and killed. Investigators say the motorcyclist and several witnesses followed her home and there there was then a confrontation in her front yard. Police say 36-year-old Sarah Nicol, or Nicole Morales had the intent to hit a motorcyclist on Volusia Avenue after some kind of incident and then took off. The motorcyclist was not seriously hurt. He then followed her along with several witnesses to the hit and run, and one of those witnesses called 911. Well, the lady just took off and left. What kind of vehicle was it? It's a blue Kia, the caller, uh, caller said. Now, police say Morales ran inside and came back out with a gun when they got there. On the call, you can hear Morales briefly yelling at the motorcyclist and then gunshots. According to police, multiple guns or multiple shots were allegedly fired at Morales by the hit and run motorcycle victim after he claimed she pointed a gun at him. Why did he sh why did he shoot her? The operator asked because she pulled a gun out on him. The caller replied. As of now, he's not facing any charges, but this is the incident okay. right here. 
Okay, let's move to the park. That girl tried to kill me. She pointed at okay. me. Okay. All right. Just relax. It's a gun to the left. She okay. To kill me. Relax. This officer's gonna come right. around. I'm so sorry. Relax. Lena, I'm not Lena moving. I'm not okay. Moving. You're good. Please. I'm not moving. I'm so sorry. She tried to kill me, and those other people are armed too. They had guns too. Give me another. And there you see the takedown right there. If you're on the radio, you can come back to see it. We'll give our thoughts in a second. Now, while a shame, New Jersey police officer allegedly fatally strikes nurse, leaves, come back to get the body, and two others are arrested. Oh, so that's murder. Stuff you blame on clubs all the time. I get it. An off-duty Newark police officer was arrested and faces several charges after he allegedly fatally struck a Bergen County nurse, put the victim into his car, then returned to the scene with the body in New Jersey earlier this month. Luis Santiago faces several charges, including vehicular homicide for striking a pedestrian on the Garden State Parkway, leaving the scene, then coming back and putting the victim in the car before returning to the scene with the dead body. You crazy ass. Uh, the preliminary investigation determined that around 3 a.m. on November 1st, the 25-year-old was traveling north on the Garden Start uh, State Parkway near exit 151 when he drove onto the right shoulder of the parkway, striking 29-year-old Damien D'Amica, a nurse. I wonder if you guys are going to give him vehicular homicide or manslaughter. Just wondering. Is he going to take six years? Idiots. Uh, neither Santiago nor his passenger, 25-year-old Albert Guzman, called 911 or rendered aid, according to officials. However, they returned to the scene several times before Santiago allegedly loaded D'Amica's body into the vehicle and removed him from the scene. Yes, all these stories are down in the description box for you guys to check out. I wonder how these cases are going to be dealt with. Is he going to get six years like the dude that killed a motorcyclist on pur uh, purpose for giving a finger? How much you want to bet they'll be handled differently? You got the one cop that actually went back and forth to get the body. But guaranteed, it'll be handled different. As far as the one where we showed you that video of the guy being taken down, uh, arrested. I can see following her. Or maybe it was her fault for coming out with a gun. But they should have been a hit and run. Instead, she died for being stupid, pulling a gun on somebody. Don't pull a gun on anybody. Unless you're going to use that sucker and shoot and not hesitate. Sad state of affairs. Something like that where the motorcyclist could have died in, a hit and, in that hit and run. Luckily, he didn't. But unfortunately, somebody else did die. I don't know. I don't know, man. You got to be careful out there. Not only bikers and motorcyclists, but everybody. Because people are freaking crazy nowadays. Freaking crazy. The stuff that happens in this country, in this world, is mind-boggling. Mind-boggling. No morality, no nothing left anymore terrible state of affairs anyway guys uh we're gonna go over to the second half of the show we're gonna be all over spotify itunes whatever your favorite podcast platform is get on to it also insane throttle tv download that roco app and we're gonna be available on amazon fire tv real soon couple days also you can listen to 24 7 rock and roll over on the insane throttle radio app on google play we are working on the apple one rock and roll i'll see you on the flip side to the extent that pending criminal matters are discussed on this website or youtube channel 
All such charges are merely accusations, and all defendants are presumed innocent until and unless proven guilty in a court of law. Follow the Insane Throttle Radio app and listen to the hottest modern rock on the planet. No commercials at all. Just art rock and roll, baby. Download the Insane Throttle Radio app for Android now on Google Play. Rock on.